there are three structures which are avascular in the eye which is one of the favorite questions of the examiner so what are they cornea sclera lens these things are unmarried they don't have any vessels vascular supply so that the, the 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 three are fundamentally avascular then you have an ophthalmic artery which is the one which is very important as a blood supply to the optic nerve what is meant by amaurosis fugax doctor amaurosis fugax if there's a sudden occlusion because of an embolus into the central artery of retina then there is a blindness as such the curtain is falling down before the eyes which is called as amaurosis fugax so how is the constriction of the pupil is mediated you know very well that edinger westphal nucleus of the third cranial nerve sends the parasympathetic fibers to ciliary ganglia which in turn lead to development of sphincter pupillae contraction leading to meiosis then you have a superior cervical ganglia which will be throwing the parasympathetic i mean postganglionic sympathetic fibers which lead to development of dilatation is what need to be remembered so sphincter pupillae are fundamentally very very circular in nature and they are innervated by the parasympathetic nervous system is what you have to ultimately remember and the dilator pupillae are innervated by the sympathetic nervous system now doctor whenever you throw light into the eye what is the reaction on the pupil pupil constricts how does pupil constrict which is called light reflex how is it mediated when you throw the light into the retina then the light sense is being transmitted by the retina and the fibers will typically reach a very important location which is basically called the pretectal nucleus from pretectal nucleus both sides heading their west fall they will go to because they need to inform both sides eyes that the light is being thrown hence you get direct light reflex where the same pupil will constrict and consensual light reflex where the contralateral pupil also will constrict if you throw the light into the retina what is the reason for that because every pretectal nucleus will send fibers to both the edinger westphal and initiates a stimulus from the edinger westphal the fibers will be passing they reach ultimately the ciliary ganglion and from ciliary ganglion they come to the eye and uh, they innervate the sphincter pupillae is what need to be remembered one of the very common question which is going to surface in the neat pg is uh, differential diagnosis of anisocoria what is meant by anisocoria ek pupil chota hai aur dusra pupil bada hai inko bolte hain anisocoria how do you approach the problem of anisocoria suppose if it is a third cranial nerve palsy leading to one pupil only to dilate generally it is associated with ptosis generally associated with ptosis then horner syndrome it lead to development of constricted pupil and hence inequality of the pupils but other features like anhydrosis anophthalmos plus the presence of uh, meiosis the combination will help you to derive a conclusion now let us look into how is the sympathetic innervation to the eye is one of the important uh, um, issue <clears throat> the sympathetic innervation originates in hypothalamus that's the reason hypothalamus is related to our limbic system which is emotional that's the reason when the granny mom becomes angry her hypothalamus is stimulated her sympathetic system activates and pupils will dilate and all grandchildren will go to sleep so sympathetic innervation the first order neuron originates in the hypothalamus from hypothalamus posterior hypothalamus the fibers will descend 
and they travel between the 8th cervical and 4th thoracic vertebrae C8 to T4 of the spinal cord and they synapse with the cervical plexus in the cervical plexus they typically uh, uh, synapse and second order neurons will begin from there ok now these axons will be passing uh, typically through the apex of the lung that is the reason a pancreas tumor can compress it and they enter the sympathetic chain in the neck and they synapse with the superior cervical ganglion and from superior cervical ganglion the post ganglionic fibers will be carrying the third order neurons that will be coursing through the cavernous sinus and ultimately they will be innervating the dilator pupillae so how will they do that typically the sympathetic fibers will course anteriorly through the uveal tract they join the fibers on the long posterior ciliary nerves and ultimately they will innervate the dilator of the iris is what I want to underscore to all of you then in addition to that what else will this post ganglionic sympathetic fibers originating from the superior cervical ganglion will be doing they will also innervate the muscle of Muller within the eyelid that's the reason any injury to them will lead to the ptosis then the post ganglionic fibers are also responsible for the sweating of the face by stimulating the sweat glands in the face that's the reason in hornets we have a anhydrosis is what we have to ultimately remember so this is how there is a anisocoria anhydrosis an ophthalmos in a patient of Horner's syndrome now there can be two kinds of Horner's congenital Horner's and acquired Horner's suppose if I develop a tumor in my apex of the lung pancos tumor it can compress the sympathetic fibers and that can be one acquired cause for the Horner what is a very important feature of the congenital Horner syndrome very characteristically typically presence of the heterochromic iridis as what you can see here it is a very typical feature only in congenital Horner syndrome is what you have to ultimately remember <coughs> now doctor whenever there is an anisocoria a simple test called dark room test will differentiate what is the cause of the unequal pupils what is the challenge in unequal pupils you don't know whether uh, a larger pupil is a dilated pupil or whether it is the normal pupil and the other is a meiotic pupil there is sometimes confusion in clinical examination take the patient into darkness when you take the patient to darkness what do you expect pupil di should dilate so the normal eye will dilate whereas the Horner's pupil will not be able to dilate so anisocoria will increase so a increasing anisocoria with the darkness is equal to Horner's syndrome which is going to be the question in the tomorrow's exam which you are going to comfortably answer let us quickly review what is the typical pathway how do we look at objects and perceive them in the vision you have a temporal half of the retina and you have a nasal half of the retina now typically there is a decusation at the level of the optic chasma and all the fibers will be reaching a very important area called lateral geniculate body which is important for the vision medial geniculate body is associated with audition then from the lateral geniculate body there is a geniculo calocrine tract which will be taking the fibers ultimately to the primary visual area which is located in the striate cortex in the occipital lobe is uh, the way which we need to fundamentally remember now the next important type of pupil which can lead to development of uh, uh, a pupillary 
constriction reaction is the argyle robertson pupil generally only the pupils in argyle robertson will be small irregular in shape they don't react if you throw light but if you take an object closer they will react to the accommodation normal accommodation reflex is there but the light reflex is missing so that is the typical feature now in this context we need to know what is meant by aapd and rapd aapd means absolute afferent pupillary defect what's the meaning of it who is the afferent in the pathway of the light reflex it is the optic nerve retina anything until optic chiasma is all afferent suppose if i have a retinal detachment completely my retina is gone into ashes then what will i get afferent absolute afferent pupillary defect you throw anything into my light i can't perceive it then there are certain entities like optic neuritis in which the conduction of the light sense is diminished in the optic nerve not totally gone then they are called relative afferent pupillary defects so an absolute afferent pupillary defect may the involved eye will be completely blind and pupils will be of equal in size and it is basically called a amorotic pupil whereas the other type it is not totally dead it is not totally dead but it is basically called a relative afferent pupillary defect which is basically called the marcus gun pupil marcus gun pupil so what is the meaning of uh, marcus gun the pupils will respond very weakly to the stimulation of the diseased eye and uh, the normal eye if you throw light it will briskly uh, constrict that means if you put light into the normal eye the normal eye constricts because its afferent is normal but the fibers will reach the pretectal nucleus and throw uh, both sides heading their westfall efferents and that will come and cause the abnormal eye also to constrict briskly but when you move the light on to the abnormal side the the retina and the optic nerve since they are abnormal they don't perceive the falling of that light and they will think there is no bright light falling on us so that's the reason they remain dilated without getting constricted but slowly they will constrict right they will slowly constrict that is the uh, uh, important thing so if you look at uh, um, the marcus gun pupil when the light is swung from one eye to the eye the affected pupil instead of constricting will paradoxically dilate which is because of the afferent pupillary defect which is tested by swinging flashlight test is what we have to ultimately remember